so much fun to uh, talk and connect and pontificate on, you know, all things engineering and so many other things. But uh, if you wouldn't mind, like obviously we, we know each other, but uh, I'd love to spend a little time to talk about your journey in engineering because I've got two young daughters I've shared with you and you know I think I think hopefully it's getting easier but if you could just share a little bit about like what got you into software engineering like how did you what was that journey like you know all the way up to maybe where we're at today and then I've got some other questions yeah definitely so um, I told you once before but like I got into technology entirely by chance right like getting into college I was actually a pre-med major um, and, I, and I, I knew very little about technology, but I happened to spend a lot of time in the computer science building because I had a student job there. I was a lab assistant. Um, and so I'd see all these engineers um, spending so many hours in the building working on their programming assignments. And um, there were a lot of times when I had to delay shutting down the lab to give them um, time to wrap up their work. Um, and, you know, I comment entirely in jest about how easy it looked, right? It's like, you know, trying to shoo, trying to shoo them out and I'd be like, you know, it looks so easy, please, you know, um, let's, let's, let's speed it up. And so um, on one of those occasions, they, um, they dared me to take a programming class and, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a big ask because I was, I've been pretty intrigued by um, whatever it was they were doing on their terminals. Um, so I did, I signed up for um, Java 1 the following semester and, didn't make anything of it. I, you know, I just thought I'd take the class, explore it, and continue down my pre-med major. But I took the class and I fell right in love with it. Right? It just sort of clicked for me. And from that point on, I just got sucked into all things computer science. Um, I ended up like getting awards in the department. I joined the programming team, uh, and we go out to all these like southeast region regional um, coding competitions. And I, you know, I just sort of I had just stumbled on this field, um, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, so I ended up switching my major um, to computer science. And then after graduation, well, I- Hold on just one second, because that's a pretty fun yeah. story just right there. It's because yeah. I, I remember like developing, I actually saw a movie and I was like, wow, if this kid from his room can code and change, do things, like that's what I want to do. So it's just yeah. kind of like they challenge and you're like, hey, this isn't that hard. I can do this. And then exactly. just like, I'm cha all right, no more pre-med, I'm all in engineering. So then you went and got a, a CS and like. Yeah, I, yeah, I went in and changed my major, um, got a CS degree. Um, I took an engineering job at a local dev shop um, right after graduation, and I got my, my master's, um, and then I eventually got into consulting, right? And I did that for, for many years, and those years were, the years in consulting were, you know, probably the most defining years in my career as an engineer, right? I, I learned and grew so much because, um, you know, in consulting, um, first of all, I worked with, the company I worked at, there were, you know, some incredibly brilliant engineers that really cared about their craft. Um, but I also got exposed to um, many different um, domains, many different tech stacks, uh, many different um, business problems. Like we're solving some, some very interesting um, business problems with our, with our clients. And so um, I would say that that's sort of where I, I grew the most. Um, and in, in that experience was also where I got exposed to a lot of different engineering cultures, right? Like, as a consultant, you know, on one hand, um, we're there to help our clients deliver um, a, a project or an initiative, but on the other hand, we're also there to help um, enable their engineers and sort of um, improve their engineering cultures. And so that, you know, I had to study a lot of different cultures, um, be able to quickly identify areas that um, that group needed to um, improve on and like, you know, come up with actionable things to help them um, practically improve their processes. Um, and so I grew leaps and bound there, bounds there. And then um, from then on, I... Um, well, let me just interrupt you on that for just a second. Is yeah. you, you said like, and obviously won't go into names, but that consulting company you work for, I think is like world renowned is like some of the hardest tests to even work for that company and has a reputation for really having engineers that you can throw into, you know, an initiative gone totally wrong. 
Um, I want to know about the next steps, but but how is that? So it was nice you got the, you got thrown into all these different cultures on sometimes new projects, sometimes turnaround projects. Was yeah. that s stressful or how was that? Yeah, we did a lot of rescue projects. Um, at the beginning, it was definitely a very different change of pace for me compared to like the small companies I've worked with beforehand because. Um, you know, that company is incredibly fast-paced. You'd, you'd be, you know, sitting in the office on Thursday and you get a call saying, you know, report to this client in a different state on Monday and, and this is a summary of the kind of problems you'd be solving, this is the tech stack, which by the way, you probably never worked with a tech stack before and so it's like, this is a tech stack, quickly, you know, learn as much as possible um, around it as you can before Monday and this is a problem space. Um, so it was, it was certainly quite challenging, it, it stretched me a lot, um, but that's also what helped me um, become a lot better at what I do, um, and that's also what helped me sort of practice my um, my leadership skills, and that's where I really um, got into tech leadership on a much different scale than I had done at um, the companies I've worked at before, right? Because, like you said, you're you know the stakes are high, um, the bar is set really high because it's it's this company that's known for you know really high quality work. Um, and then, you know, you're responsible for, you know, the, not only the team of consultant engineers that you're going in there with, but you're also responsible for um, helping to upskill the, the client engineers that you're working with. Um, and the client is really relying on you for, for advice around, like, direction um, around the software that they're building. And so, yes, stakes were very high, but it was great because it, it forced me to grow in, in so many ways. Makes sense. Um, let me ask you just if you would a question. So I mean, obviously now you're a, an engineering leader, and I'm sure all of those experiences really helped you in kind of being the leader that you are today. But if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to add you a little bit of a selfish question because I have, as I mentioned, I have two daughters. Any feedback because, or any any maybe stories you can share because I, I know I think every leader that runs engineering or any company is thinking about diversity and inclusion. And you know, uh, inequity, right? It's not everybody can afford to, to, to go to college, or maybe they have the skills to do the job. Um, how did you kind of, did you have any experiences? How did you power through that? Now, and it's not the same, you know, my girls are still in high school, but I know one of them likes to play video games. Yeah. And, um, you know, one day she came home and she was kind of sad. She had some online friends, and some, some boys really made her feel really uncomfortable. And um, it's something that I think, you know, anybody that's in technology in particular, we have to do a better job as leaders. But maybe you could share, like, what's some feedback or stories that people could take as, like, lessons and inspirations to power through it like, like you've done and, and have a successful career? Yeah, um, I'll say one of the biggest things that probably helps is to have a, um, a mentor or a sponsor that is, um, you know, depending on the kind of um, sort of diversity that you represent, um, someone, that, someone that looks like you, right? So whether that's a, um, a female engineer that's much more senior than you that might have walked the same um, path that you're, you're currently walking, um, you know, they're, they're so crucial to um, not only giving you advice around um, how to navigate um, some of the tricky, the tricky waters of, of being an underrepresented group in, in technology. They can also, you know, really tell you a lot about the lessons that they learned and, and um, some of the, the mistakes that they would sort of approach, um, some of the mistakes they made and that they will approach differently. Um, and I think that would really help, uh, help guide you. The other thing I would say is being in an environment that, um, actually values the diversity and the inclusion and the equality that we, we all talk so much about, right? A lot of companies um, talk about it, but not a lot of companies live it, right? So being in an environment where you are valued as an individual, regardless of your, your gender, regardless of your race, um, being in an environment where you have um, accomplices um, in your corner, right? Folks that um, would call out when, when um, you know, your voice is not being heard for whatever reason and would be there to amplify your voice, I think, is very, very important. And, and a place where um, you're 
given the same stretch opportunities as the rest of your peers, right? And you're given the same um, chance to take risks and make mistakes and, and to sort of um, fail safely as the rest of your colleagues without being sort of negatively impacted. I think those are some, some, some key things. I think that makes sense is, I think, you know, that purposeful culture. I think that if a company truly values that, not just to talk about it, then they hire people and they make it important that we live these values every single day. So I, I think that's that's spot on. Um, I love to, I think there's so many other learnings. If it's good with you, I'd love to do a couple of more uh, sessions like this, talk about like best engineering practices and, and some of those other journeys. Does that sound good? Yes, sounds perfect. All right, awesome. Thank you.